Bulls and the South Carolina Gamecocks in the sixth and perhaps final game here from Joanne Graff Field in this opening round of the NCAA postseason. The NCAA softball regionals are presented by Capital One. It's been a quick and easy path to get to this regional final for Florida State. Two five-inning run rule victories over Bethune-Cookman and South Florida. South Carolina has battled its way out of the loser's bracket, took them extra innings yesterday to eliminate USF and get here to the regional final against the defending national champions. So glad to have you with us here this afternoon to start a great day of softball on ESPN. I'm Mike Cousins. She's the two-time national champ at Oklahoma, Erin Miller. So much on the line today. Seniors perhaps in their final games. Florida State defending the crown and South Carolina needs two wins to keep the season going. Yeah, I think the thing that sticks out for me with this matchup is Florida State's offense. They lead the nation with 103 home runs, but it's so evenly distributed. One through nine, seven of the nine starters over 10 home runs. There have been more than 10,000 home runs hit across college softball this year. It's leaving the park in record numbers. A big part of that's this team. Four consecutive homers in one inning for FSU. And they also get it done on the mound. Megan King getting the start today for the Seminoles. She has been so good as of late. Scoreless going back to the end of the regular season. 20 and a third consecutive without allowing a run. And in her postseason experience, more than 40 innings going back to last year's Super against LSU, allowing just one earned run. A long day yesterday for South Carolina and a quick turnaround. They'll see Dixie Raley in the circle again. 174 pitches thrown with less than 16 hours to recover. And in the 10th, it was her fellow senior Kennedy Clark in the top of the 10th to go ahead with the win against South Florida. With their backs against the wall this year and last year, South Carolina has fared well. Last year, 3-0, and including two at the end of the Columbia Regional last year against Liberty to move on to their Super Regional. They've never done that, though, on the road. They'll try and win two here today and eliminate Florida State. The Knolls need just one to move on to the Supers. And the first pitch is next from Tallahassee. The South Carolina senior Dixie Raley stood in this same circle helping to eliminate USF and she's got to go up against the defending national champs here today. 174 pitches and the question I had coming into this game is, is she going to be at 100%? And the other side of that is maybe she's not. Is her 80, maybe 70% going to be better than the 100% of another arm on this staff? And what this tells me with this decision of starting Dixie is that it is. She's that good in the circle. One of the only two seniors on this staff, on this team. So she will get the start here today for the Gamecocks. Against the starting lineup for Florida State, that's brought to you by Capital One. It's a powerful one. Uh, the most home runs in the country from this squad. Seven players with at least 10 home runs. It starts with Herod at the top, who's got 15 homers. She's stolen 41 bases. The only player in the country to have those kind of numbers. And she leads it off. As Florida State on its home field is the visiting team here this afternoon. Herod's not just only done a good job swinging the bat, but seeing a lot of pitches from that leadoff spot over the 10 innings in the two games Florida State has played, she's drawn three walks as well. Talking to Callie was one of the highlights for me this weekend. A senior that just loves the game and you get that sense when you sit down and, and ask her some questions about her team. Just a full heart for the Seminoles. So committed. She talked so highly of her teammates and the experiences that she's had here at FSU. And you want to see somebody who has fun playing the game? Watch for number 10 in gold throughout the course of the afternoon. And every time you see her face come on the screen, there's likely to be some <laughs> form of a smile there. 
And you get the sense she's just a selfless player. You know, she would never ask her teammates to do anything that she wouldn't do herself. And that's why you see her in the leadoff position in this lineup. She'll do anything she can to work her way on base. Grayley's payoff misses the zone. Fourth walk of the regional for Herod, and the speedster is aboard at first. I'm not sure where this pitch missed. In fact, if I was Dixie Raley, I'm a little worried because I threw it right over the middle of the plate. And you know, we saw this zone yesterday with Dixie in the circle. A very tight strike zone that she had to establish early in the game. So a leadoff walk for Callie Herod. And this is likely a mindset that FSU had coming into this game, knowing that 174 pitches were thrown from Rayleigh in the circle. Take till you get a strike. Make her labor in the circle. Less than 16 hours to recover for Dixie. Gordon, the senior out of Miami, sends it back 0-2, an all-ACC first teamer this year. Double-digit home runs just about throughout this lineup, 14 for her. This will be part of the feeling out process for Raley. With home plate umpire Anthony Small and finding what the reaches of his strike zone will be here in the first. There goes Herod, the throw to second base. Not in time, her 42nd stolen base of the season. Not surprised with this call. We've seen Callie do it all year. Her 46, excuse me, 42nd successful steal and 47 now attempts. Florida State, the number four overall seed, defending national champions and the 20th straight postseason berth for the Seminoles. Liner to right, it sends Simpson back, she's got it. And the speedy Herod tags goes to third. The Seminoles have the game's first potential run over at third with one out. You know, you can see Florida State hit the long ball. We've seen it all regional long, but that is classic situational hitting. Hitting behind a runner, knowing as a righty, you have to go to opposite field to advance Cali from second to third. Sydney Sherrill bats third for Florida State. Fellow Oki at the plate from Moore, Oklahoma. About an hour and a half, hour 45 from where I'm from in Tulsa. So clearly a productive region. <laughs> it's a good place to be from. 1-0 is sky to left. The senior Clarks underneath. The senior Herod tags. And the throw is tardy. Herod is in on the sack fly from, from Cheryl. And just like that, Florida State's on the board one zip. A great throw from Kennedy Clark and left, but just not in time. And again, you think about the power numbers of this team. We keep talking about home runs, but that is classic executional hitting. Being able to understand the situation, not overthink it, not try and be the hero to hit the long ball, but just do your job. Get the ball to the outfield for a tag and a score, and already one on the board for Florida State. The Lonnie Alameda squad has, at least so far in this regional, had their runs come more often via home run. Now, 13 of their 21 runs in this regional have been via the home run. Three.
3-0. and I, Elizabeth Mason. The sophomore from Tampa, all ACC second team selection. She doesn't have to swing the bat and gets the trip to first. Two of the first four given free passes by Rayleigh. Starting to see maybe some of that wear and tear from yesterday's 10 inning game. So a couple of Georgia natives square off head to head for Morgan who finished her high school career in Georgia and Rayleigh in the circle who started out her college career at Georgia Southern her first two seasons and after the walk gets ahead 0-2 on the junior Morgan Morgan homered back in game one. Started the home run fest here for the Seminoles. Hard shot down the line at third base and it's all the way into the corner. Mason gets waved around third. She's in to score. Two nothing Seminoles. This team is more than just home runs. They're able to manufacture runs in other ways, and that's why they're so dangerous. We've seen the speed from Callie Harrod to get herself in scoring position, situational fly ball outs to score runs, and now a two-out clutch, clutch appearance from Danny Morgan at the plate, a double and an RBI. Five for eight for the weekend with three knocked in, and it brings up Anna Shelna. The multitude of ways in which this team can be successful is so impressive. Five batters in, that was their first base hit of the inning and they've already scored two. Catcher's got a runner at second and two out. South Carolina is here into the postseason for the seventh straight year, a program record, 22nd time overall. And they were the only team in this four-team regional to not be the champions of their league, but coming out of a very competitive SEC. Now the third straight year that all the 13 teams in that league made it to the postseason. Beverly Smith has taken the squad in seven of her nine seasons. Rayleigh is a strike away from ending the inning. Gamecocks had a long layoff after losing in the SEC tournament. Coming into the postseason, but it's been an action-packed weekend for them, having to work their way out of the loser's bracket. You just wonder how short of a leash, leash Coach Beverly Smith is going to have for Dixie in the circle. As we mentioned, 10 complete innings for her last night. And already two runs up on the board for FSU. And it's not like those were short innings either as that game went into the 8th, the ninth, the 10th. USF put up a valiant fight getting runners on base in those extra frames. But they were unable to capitalize. Kennedy Clark was for South Carolina with her 10th inning solo home run being the difference. Wider left field base hit for Shelnut. Morgan's around third. Clark with another throw to the plate. 
Three nothing Florida State. In the blink of an eye, to three spot in the first. And that'll bring out Coach Beverly Smith. A 3-2 full count, two out at bat for postseason Anna. She shines this part of the season, and you see why. So far, 15 of the 21 FSU hits are for extra bases in this tournament. And they played the bare minimum innings-wise coming into this game with a couple of run rule wins in five. And when you say postseason Anna, the numbers are stark from what she does in May and June in her Seminole career. Coming into the postseason, a 337 May and June hitter. 12 homers, has driven in 37. Five postseason home runs last year. And she sends another across the plate to bring up Cassidy Davis, the seventh hitter here in the top of the first. Out toward left, Clark looks up, it's off the top of the wall. Shelnut gets the green light around third base to the plate. She slides, and she's out at home plate. But still struck well and almost out of the yard for Davis. A breakthrough first for Florida State on their home field. And the king up next. The reigning national champion in the circle, the lefty flamethrower, coming up in the bottom of the first. Their school record books in many offensive categories. They take a three nothing lead in the top of the first. And as if she needed any help, Megan King is quite good on her own, but to have a lead makes her even more dangerous here in this elimination game against South Carolina. A true leader for this team, described as, as the go-to person, the go-to guy for FSU. And so much success to back that up. She'll work up in the zone, but she has a devastating changeup. She's worked her entire career to establish that pitch. Such a smart pitcher, and you think of the experience of winning a national championship last year, and now with two freshman arms behind her, she's in that mentor role. She's able to set that stage and pass the torch now, going out with her senior season. Starting lineup for South Carolina is presented by Capital One. Kennedy Clark in the three spot has been one of the hot bats. Her and Bosel both lead the squad with four hits in the postseason, and will they? They'll hope. To see production today is in the sixth spot. Lauren Stewart, who's 0 for 7, coming into this game. King All ACC first team this season for the fourth time and was named the MVP of the ACC tournament. She threw 17 shutout innings and has pitched almost half of the innings in the circle this year for the Seminole. Two and two to Bozel, the junior from Yorba Linda, California. She leads this team in walks, a great eye, the top part of this lineup. Second straight year she's done that. Flares it to left. Herzog positioned perfectly for the first down. So you notice the defense here shifting 
You see them moving to now be straight up for a righty, but against lefties, they, they shift over to that opposite field side because they anticipate with the speed and the accuracy of King in the circle that they won't be able to get that barrel around, especially with the short gamers from the left side for the Gamecocks. Three left-handed hitters in this lineup. Clark on deck, Bosel who let it off, and Haley Simpson in the number nine spot. Behind 2-0 here on Jenna Johns, the third baseman. Strike two and one. And when they shift around against left-handed hitters like that, are the pitches called in coordination to work to the outside of the plate? Absolutely. With King throwing a lot of those curves away from left-handed hitters, that's something you have to anticipate. That's part of that gamesmanship at the plate, having a high IQ in the box, knowing where the defense is set up, what they might be anticipating you to do based on the pitches that are thrown. King last year was dominant in the Women's College World Series. 34 and a third innings of the circle, a .20 ERA. Payoff pitch goes back to the screen for Johns. Who came into the postseason having hit four home runs in her last four games, but has been just one for 10 so far. Stairs ball four to Johns. It was the second batter, two back to back, that started out with 2 0 counts for Megan King. And we had mentioned the tight zone. The tight zone so far we've seen all weekend, but especially from the umpire behind the plate tonight. Making each of these arms in the circle for the Gamecocks and the Seminoles be super perfect. Pinpoint location. You'll see Shellnut come out just to have a word with Kane quickly. Here we go, Ken. But that's what it takes. Honestly, that's what that first inning is for, figuring out what you can get away with on both sides of the game. Can you expand the strike zone? Is it tight? How can we change our approach knowing what we're able to get and what we can't get? Now, so far, Anthony Small Behind home plate has had the eponymous strike zone. Not a lot of real estate to catch the plate. Three straight out of the zone to Clark, whose last swing was the biggest one of the season last night that kept the season alive for South Carolina. Two straight walks for King. You can even look back at last inning with Dixie Rayleigh in the circle, a leadoff walk with some questionable, questionable pitches called against Callie Herod, and that's when the game exploded. She had to bring that ball closer over the strike zone, and FSU, it's, you just can't do that. And now Megan King experiencing that against South Carolina. Two back-to-back -back walks. And she's being challenged to bring that ball closer over the white of the strike zone. There is some power to be found in this lineup for South Carolina, including in the cleanup spot. You've got KK Drotar coming up, who excels not only in the circle, but also in the batter's box. Ten home runs for her this year. And we've seen it this weekend. A huge blast to the pole over left field. We've seen her get close. Warning track power a little bit, but she's been able to come up clutch for her team more times than one. We might even get to see her in the circle today behind Dixie. Both tied for saves with 11.
And they're missing a little bit of pop in their starting lineup without Alyssa Kumiyama in the starting nine. Set to come to the plate against Megan King. There she is, number 25 in the dugout for South Carolina. Perhaps see her in a pinch hitting role later on. So Megan King has started out with a 2-0 count against four consecutive Gamecock hitters. Has yet to get ahead. Got behind Drotar, but got her in on the hands. And Herzog has recorded both outs this inning. To me right there in that situation, I'm taking until I get a strike. Two back-to-back -back walks, she's struggling to find the strike zone, and I'm in a 2-0 count. Even though that's a hitter's count, I'm gonna make one of the best arms in the nation find the strike zone. Kenzie McGuire, the redshirt junior from Hudson, Florida, has been here before, metaphorically and literally. Her and Kennedy Clark over at first base, the only two on this Gamecocks roster who played in the last regional South Carolina travel to Tallahassee for. Still just confused on why we're not seeing this Gamecock lineup take until they get a strike. King struggling to find this strike zone early in this ball game. When you think about the accuracy of Megan King, she's not one to walk many batters. Two in one inning. For me as a hitter, my attack and my plan at the plate is to make her challenge me. That's why you get three strikes in an at bat. Let her labor in the circle. She's only thrown two innings coming into this game. How much of the aggressive swings do you think stems from looking at the scoreboard and saying, uh-oh, we're down early? Well, you got to take what you can get, especially against this team with this staff, against this arm. If she's throwing balls, make her throw more balls. And from what you're seeing with your pitcher, Dixie Raley, in the circle with a tight strike zone, you should know that walking into the bottom of the first inning with your first at bats. No hits, two walks, Johns at second, Clark at first, and the 2-2 is into center field, base hit. John speeds around third to score South Carolina's first run. Patience pays off for the Gamecocks as McGuire gets her 26th RBI of the season. Just too sweet over the plate, a curveball that cuts across the strike zone to the righty, Kinsey McGuire. And with a two strike count, such a clutch at bat for the Gamecocks. Only the second earned run Megan King has given up in 40 seven innings. And that run ends a streak of 21 straight scoreless innings for her that went all the way through the ACC tournament back to the fifth of this month in the regular season finale against Syracuse. Cheryl calls for it, the inning is over. But the Gamecocks do have an answer for a three spot from the Knowles. 3-1, the end of one. The NCAA Softball Regionals is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? After one inning here in Tallahassee, Florida, 3-1 Florida State, which has played 11 innings in the regional, scored 23 runs. An offensive juggernaut and always a force to be reckoned with when they've got the redshirt senior Megan King in the circle. 
The winner of this regional, it takes just one victory for Florida State, two today for South Carolina, moves on to take on Oklahoma State. Into Supers, the first team there with that regional starting a day ahead of the other 15 sites. The freshman leading things off, Mackenzie Herzog. We got to see her pitch in game one. Four innings and perfect work. She also had a grand slam yesterday. She flies it toward left, Clark's on the run and brings it in. So there's seven players in this lineup with at least 10 home runs. So when they start leaving the yard, she's not the one you look to to have it happen, but it was an impactful moment in the game. She was one of those unassuming bats. We came into that game talking about the seven of the nine with 10 or more home runs. And it was the freshman, only her third home run on the year that came in clutch for the Seminoles. A lot of postseason experience for that young athlete there. And that wasn't planned by Coach Alameda. She said most of her freshmen, especially pitchers, she likes to redshirt them, get them seasoned, have them just for a year just to soak it all in and be a sponge. But she needed two of those freshman arms to come straight in and help this team be successful. Benavides nearly to the same spot. Putting Clark into some running situations. Two up, two down. Two quick outs, the senior Clark in left field, covering some ground. Almost takes her to the fence. So a quick inning is exactly what Dixie Rayleigh needs. Not a lot of turnaround time for her. We heard they got to jump in the pool yesterday when they got back to the hotel just to cool off after a long day. Dixie felt pretty good despite throwing 174 pitches. But it's about that recovery, resting. Make sure you're getting enough water, especially in this Florida heat, humidity out here. That was her line from yesterday. Five strikeouts, 10 complete innings pitched. That recovery is huge. You think back to the off season of what each one of these athletes are putting in, stressing their bodies, early morning workouts, long, hot practices. And this is what it all comes down to is the hard work you put in when no one is watching. The season is on the line for Dixie Raley, one of the two seniors on this team that now have to lean upon that work. She walked Herod last inning, a seven batter first, as three runs came across for Florida State. And they got their first run as Herod scored without the benefit of a base hit. She took second on a line out on a stolen base rather, took third on a line out from Carson Gordon and scored on Sidney Sherrill's sacrifice fly. Sidney Sherrill's sacrifice fly, by the way, coming to theaters soon. It's a fun adventure movie. <laughs> Inside three and two. Here it really started things off. Last inning with the walk and the steal, flashing the speed. And she'll draw another walk. Back-to-back -back walks for the senior. And the plate appearances for all Florida State hitters have been limited, given just 10 innings in two games coming into this one. She had two hits and four at-bats, and that's her fifth walk in two games plus. Wouldn't be surprised to see her try and take second again with Gordon at the plate.
Gordon and Herod, like peanut butter and jelly, they finish each other's sentences. Always hanging out with one another. To the gap, right center field. Hang on! Gordon's 15th home run of the season. Five to one, Florida State. Well, you're right about peanut butter and jelly. Callie Herod finds her way on with her second walk and its fellow senior, Carson Gordon, cashing it in. That's her second home run of this tournament. Now 17 of the last 23 hits for FSU have been extra bases. This ball up and away, she's able to see the pitch deep and check out the extension. That's the most impressive part with Carson Gordon is she's able to extend to every side of this field. She sprays the field with power. All hugs for the seniors. Peanut butter jelly on a softball bat. That's a good song. Peanut, Peanut butter, butter jelly in a softball bat. <laughs> <laughs> That's very mid-2000s internet <laughs> for those scratching their heads. And as Florida State has, over the course of this weekend, jumped Arizona, jumped Oklahoma to take the national lead, now 104 home runs. It crushes their power numbers from last year. 10 home runs in this regional and only two last year in their regional. So a huge jump. And that follows suit with their power numbers this year, just unmatched. 104 now leading the nation. Looked like it was gonna be a quiet inning. Herzog and Benavides went down with a couple of flyouts to left. A free pass for Herod and a two run shot for Gordon. Allowed the Seminoles to double up on their advantage from two to four runs. They win this game, they stay home next weekend and welcome Oklahoma State. Florida State has to win two games today, coming out of the loser's bracket to end it. Oh, it's tipped by Clark and caught by Stewart. Remarkable play. That was my reaction too. Lauren Stewart with the assist. But it's the big catch from center fielder Lauren Stewart who helps her fellow senior to cash the third out. The Women's College World Series. Journey planned for all year long. The destination, the Champ Series in Oklahoma City. The walk -off. 297 teams started out the season with a dream. 64 will actually get to do it. Most exciting time of the year, mayhem all across the country in college softball. Bottom of the second here at Joanne Graff Field in Tallahassee where Megan King and the Florida State Seminoles take a 5-1 lead after a two-run home run from Carson Gordon. Bottom two and the bottom third of the Gamecocks lineup begins with the freshman Madison Owens. Mike Cousins, Aaron Miller, the two-time national champ at Oklahoma, glad to have you along to get this exciting day of softball started where, well, let's say weather permitting, our fingers crossed, We've got our rabbit tails, we're knocking on wood, that weather cooperates everywhere across the country to have all the supers match up set up. We're seeing a slightly different lineup from South Carolina with the absence of sophomore Alyssa Kumiyama, who is a huge power source for the Gamecocks. So she is in the dugout this game not sure if there's maybe an injury or just to take a rest, but a little different one to nine for South Carolina. Owens strokes at the center for the first out of the inning. We go to the studio for an update from Molly McGrath. Looking sharp for the Wildcats, one of 13 teams 
That's everybody in the SEC to make it into the NCAA postseason. Kentucky, 11th in the country this year, averaging about six and a half runs a game. Fabian takes first, back-to-back -back freshman. Three straight come to the plate here as Haley Simpson steps in. Simpson had a clutch two-out RBI in last night's 10-inning game. She does a great job at the bottom of this lineup, really passing the bat, turning it back over to her leadoff, Mackenzie Bozel. To short for Herod. And they get the lead runner. Fabian's off the bases, two down. After that RBI from Simpson, it was somewhat of a three-hour tour, Gilligan's Island length. Wait through extra innings with so many opportunities come and gone for South Carolina and USF. Really fun to watch the pitching yesterday and for folks just swooping into this regional as USF was eliminated from the tournament yesterday. We saw the end of the sophomore season for Georgina Korak, the American Conference Pitcher of the Year, who started all three games for them. Bozel at the dish, 0 for 1. Going back to the hit-by-pitch for Fabian, that was only the 16th hit-by-pitch that King has thrown this season. You can see, saw her toweling off in the dugout, wiping the sweat off of her face in the mound. It's a hot day. We were walking on the field before this game and sweating ourselves. You see her struggle. You've seen her really have to chip away at the strike zone. Eighty-six, and you imagine the temperature will be going up. No matter where you are, if you're in the sun, it's not hard to feel like you're the Wicked Witch of the West. Yeah, we're only midday. It's, it's going to get hotter, and the humidity makes it feel probably like 90. I believe uh, on Twitter, the NCAA softball postseason bingo card had the something along the lines of hair straightening weather. <laughs> which well, I, I, I have curly I, hair. I, I, so. cannot, I cannot sympathize with that, but I know that is the case for a lot of people. So the third walk and the fourth free base that Megan King has given up just through two innings. So a surprising start, but on the scoreboard, her team still has the advantage, 5-1. Part of the success to get to this game in the regional for South Carolina has been excelling with two out. Can they do it again here? And a big cut by Jana Johns, who also walked back in the first, but without a doubt, one of the hottest bats for South Carolina. 15 home runs on the season. A lot of power in the two hole. King with the 0 2, looking for a first strikeout. And we'll have to throw at least one more to clear the game Cox in the second. So the three walks in the first two innings for Megan King, the redshirt senior. Ties a season high for her. Her career high is four. And this is, you know, I haven't kept an official tally, but maybe the fourth or fifth convergence in the circle in the first two innings. 
And again, that's that's a game plan that I'm seeing from the dugout of South Carolina is you have to recognize what's going on for Megan King in the circle, struggling to find that strike zone. She doesn't struggle there. She gets the punch out with the curveball against Jana Johns. So is Megan King finally settling in? She cuts the strike zone for the strikeout. Welcome back to the NCAA Softball Regionals presented by Capital One. Here at Joanne Graff Field in Tallahassee. The Women's College World Series returns to Oklahoma City with the action starting Thursday, May 30th, 12 Eastern, live on ESPN. And for more information on the 2019 Women's College World Series, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. After two innings in the circle, South Carolina makes a pitching change from Dixie Raley to Kayla Drotar here in the third. First pitch is swung on, hit well by Elizabeth Mason to right field. Simpson's got it. One pitch and one out for Drotar, who's worked eight innings so far in the regional. A much different look from Dixie Raley. She will stay low in the zone. So Drotar really having a lot of ground ball out. She uses her defense behind her. Not a strikeout pitcher, so you'll likely see the ball put in play quite a bit, but it will be with that hard drop ball low in the zone. Off speed for a strike. Throughout the course of the regular season, the innings load was about even between Drotar and Rayleigh. And the other pitcher we saw here in the regional from the Gamecocks was Kelsey O, who threw just a third of an inning, walked four batters against USF in the first matchup between those two teams. And it's been Rayleigh and Drotar the rest of the way. Two on Morgan as she looks for her second base hit. Got a double back in the first. Had a home run in game one of this tournament. <laughs> on the ground to second. Quickly two retired as Drotar comes into the game. So FSU is going to have to make a quick adjustment as they see what type of approach Drotar is taking towards them. Low, hard in the zone, a drop ball that will tail down and away from, especially from righties. To be successful off of a low strike, especially one that falls off the table, you have to see that pitch deep. Drotar will try and get a 1-2-3 in the third. After at least five Seminoles came to the plate in each of the first two innings as they put five runs on the board. They need just one victory to advance to Supers for the eighth time. South Carolina would need to win this game and then another game about 30 minutes afterward to claim the regional championship. The Gamecocks had the tough road yesterday of having to get Back-to-back -back games, just about 30 minutes in between. USF had the ability to spend some time relaxing. Didn't get to go back to the hotel, but it ended up being the Gamecocks, the victors in the end. Strike three, the inning is over. One, two, three for Drotar after two innings. 
from Dixie Raley. 5-1, middle of the third. There's work to do offensively. They've got stabilized in the circle. And we welcome you to Clearwater. The amount of great matchups and great teams here. Good piece of hitting here. It is gone! Spectacular matchups all weekend here. To the track! And it is caught! What a catch! Are you serious? A magical couple of days. What an incredible event. The remainder of the field revealed earlier this weekend for next February 2020, the second St. Pete Clearwater Elite presented by Wilson. And it's a great field once again. Plenty of SEC flavor. Alabama, Georgia, Missouri, South Carolina in there. The additions of Kansas and Liberty and Oklahoma State, USF and Texas Tech for a tournament where Florida State showed that as the defending national champions, they were not to be trifled with, going 6-0 against their opponents in that field. No game closer than three runs for the Seminoles. A couple of seniors here, Kennedy Clark, Megan King. Clark through the second of three walks. Her first plate appearance today as King has already tied her season high with three and is in danger of a fourth. Really remarkable numbers for her coming into this game. Scoreless in her last 20 and a third innings in the circle. There's ball four, tying a career high with four walks now. The leadoff batter is aboard for the first time today for South Carolina. It looks just to be a mind game now of, of thinking about it, thinking too much in the circle. But now all of a sudden, base on balls is a thing that you've got to fight against. Instead of just attacking the strike zone like you know how to do, now it's pitching with fear of walking. And there's an intricate balance to be found as well between how much you play your best players, especially their first two games coming in run rule victories where King pitched two of those 10 innings. Ronnie Alameda careful to make sure she doesn't overwork anybody, but also manages to get the younger players some time in the circle as well. Making sure everybody's fresh for a long postseason run. You know, I even heard Megan King make that quote and that phrase is making things a thing, making it a thing. And there's times where she will hook onto a thought or a fear or an idea and try and make it a thing. And that's something she's had to battle with in the circle. I don't want to overanalyze games that it could be my last or that I'm putting on the jersey for the last time. I don't want to make that a thing. And right now it seems like she's overthinking base on balls. She's struggling to find that strike zone early in counts. Drotar sends it down into the warm-up area for Florida State. Still two and two against the power back, who's got 10 home runs this season. Through the hole left side, base hit. All the way to the warning track. Clark's got good speed. She comes in to score from first. An RBI double for Drotar. And it's five to two in favor of Florida State. Herod from short had just started to inch her way toward the bag and that allowed space for the ball to get through. So off the end of the bat, Drotar is able to punch this ball right past Herod at shortstop. Herzog trying to track this ball down and that is one of the cardinal rules as an outfielder and just a freshman in left field is keeping the ball off the wall and you see why. For every step you take in the outfield, a runner on the base path is taking three, even four. 
So to keep that ball off the wall probably could have saved a run. The freshman Alex Fulmer is the pinch runner for Drotar at second. McGuire with a runner in scoring position. Nobody out. Sends Morgan back a few steps. And that's the first out of the inning. So that brings up Lauren Stewart, who's been an interesting one for me to talk about. She has yet to find her first hit of this tournament but continues to get opportunities at the plate. And the reason she's an interesting player for me is the way her team and her coach talks about her. It's a surprising player, not a very big kid at the plate, but so much power, so much pop, and the fastest hands they've ever seen. We saw her rip a very long foul ball yesterday that flashed a little bit of that power, although not into the field. But that's why you're seeing her continue to get opportunities at the plate. If she can connect with the ball, it's going to go far. The Georgia native started her college career at Purdue, and every game starter as a freshman, but wanted to get back closer to home. So after the 2016 season, went to Columbia, South Carolina, played in a reserve role, but missed last year a hip injury that came with a 10-month recovery for Stewart. Looking for her first hit of the postseason, 0 for 8. Kim gets a swing and a miss on the 2-2. Be careful there. I think Benavides was coming across the field. Thinking it was the third out and very good awareness from the shortstop Herod to go over and cover the bag, make sure that Fulmer couldn't steal it. Well, you saw the reaction from Shelnut after that swing through. She wanted to toss the ball up in the air and then realizing that, oh my gosh, it's only two outs. A little bit of chaos happening in the field. She cuts across like she's going to go to the dugout. That was quasi-catastrophic there. So they all regroup now. Things just seem to be not firing, at least on defense for FSU, as cleanly as they have in the past. Megan King struggling to find that strike zone. Defense having trouble knowing how many outs are on the board. And almost half of the Gamecocks hitters who come to the plate I've seen the first two pitches out of the zone. King today tying a career high. The red shirt senior has walked four. A flare into left field. That's a base hit. Fulmer around third. The throw to the plate. She beats it. It's five to three. The second South Carolina run of the inning as Owens brings home Fulmer. I even think back to the ball that Herzog couldn't keep off of the fence that could have saved a run. And a great call by the third base coach to send the runner home, challenging this freshman arm in left field. Not able to get the throw there in time. Herzog's been impactful, both at the plate and in the circle, where now we're going to see a new arm for Florida State. So an early exit for Megan King. And the game has changed here in the third, a two-run difference. Leaves after just two and two-thirds. She'd pitched two innings over the first two games for Florida State. She tied a career high with four walks. And the line's not done on her just yet. Still responsible for Owens at first base as the redshirt senior turns.
turns it over to the freshman, Catherine Sandercock, who's thrown four innings so far in the postseason and allowed just one run. This is one of the freshman arms that Megan King has mentored this year. A hard, heavy drop ball, very competitive in the circle. Still growing, still getting some of that postseason experience, but she'll get the chance this summer to play for USA's junior team. So another big stage for her to grow as a young pitcher. She faces a pinch hitter here who's been strategically deployed throughout the course of the weekend. The sophomore, Katie Preble, who transferred in this year from Gardner-Webb. The freshman season, she was the Big South Player of the Year, hit 23 home runs, the 438 average. So she steps in for Fabian. Couple of hops to Cheryl, who on the run makes the throw, and the inning's over. Damage undoubtedly done, though, by South Carolina, taking King out of the game and pulling it to within 5-3. After three, Florida State up 5-3 over South Carolina, needing just a win to move on to Supers and take on Oklahoma State. Lonnie Alameda, the head coach, you're fortunate to have one of the best pitchers in the country, Megan King. What did you see in that last half inning where you made the decision to take her out? Oh, I just think um, we've built up two rookies behind her to be able to help out and get us ground ball we need to. So situationally, it was a good stuff. And uh, we got a good zone here, good tight zone. So we got to be able to pitch to it. And uh, she's just missing her spots a little bit. But she'll be back if we need it. I know you guys have a lot of power, but I've also been impressed with your situational hitting. The sack flies and hitting behind runners. Do you feel like that's going to be the key thing going into postseason for you all? Oh, definitely situationally. I mean, this time of year, any time you can play to run, no matter how you can get it done, you know, is important. So we talked about it yesterday. I mean, incredible the back-to-back -back home runs right so exciting but in end you got to get back and have an at-bats for team at bat so um, I'd like how they kind of brought it back in but yet still getting the big swing when we need it thank you coach we appreciate it thank you so the small strike zone was you imagine in both dugouts a topic of conversation early on but I like how she described it. A good, tight strike zone. You got to take what you get. Diplomatically spoken. Right. I mean, you have to roll with the punches. It's not something you can control. And that's something I've always loved about Coach Alameda is her ability to be positive, to see the best in any situation. That's not something they can change. But one thing she can change is the arm she has in the circle. So if they need to make a fresh start, get a freshman in there just to shake up what's going on on the field, they haven't looked their best. So maybe it will take Katherine Sandercock to bring that in. So both teams with ace arms to start, making early pitching changes. King, two and two thirds, replaced by the freshman Sandercock. And Rayleigh, the senior for South Carolina, went two innings as Drotar set down the Seminoles one, two, three in her first inning, last frame in the third. Two to Davis is off the hands and back out of play. Drotar starting to establish that off-speed pitch low in the zone. You can hear the crowd, FSU fans, not happy about that call. They haven't seen it on the other side of the ball field. But that could be the difference for Drotar is keeping these powerful FSU hitters off balance. Well, she's seen four, struck out two, and retired them all. So far, two swing throughs. One flashed inning from Shellnut, and another one from Davis on the same pitch. A curveball way out of the strike zone. A great chase pitch to get the strikeout. A swing and a miss to start off McKenzie Herza. Thursday is the practice day for all these teams. Also a time where we get to sit down and talk to the players. 
A lot of the times, it'll be the more veteran players, the seniors. For Florida State, we chatted with three seniors. And Herzog was there, although for a time, we didn't know who she was. I thought she might have been on <laughs> staff or a daughter of someone, just very soft-spoken, off to the side. Nobody had introduced her, so it was, it was unclear for a short time. She taps the 0-2 back to the circle, and she's retired as well. But as you alluded to before, she's one of the players, along with Sandra Cotton, who's now pitching for Florida State, that Megan King has intentionally sought out. Of course, they play the same position, but saying that she's really enjoyed having her opportunity in her last year to help the younger players, the younger pitchers, develop into better players and great people. And that's instantly apparent from talking to King, who also spends a lot of time volunteering at the local hospital in the pediatric unit. Yeah, King had talked just about how this season wasn't all about her. She's not going to be selfish in the circle. It's also about laying a foundation for these young pitchers behind her. You could say that for any senior on the field that's fighting for their season. Dixie Raley for South Carolina. Kennedy Clark, a senior. They're going to want to pass that torch on to their younger athletes. So far, the offensive flame for FSU with Drotar in the circle has been extinguished. Six up, six down. South Carolina looking to win two today against Florida State. Down a pair here in the bottom of the fourth. Their head coach, Beverly Smith. Let's talk about this weekend and last year when your back has been up against the wall. You have fought off elimination every time. Why has your team been successful facing elimination? Well, I think it's what you're seeing today. This team's fighting, and uh, I like the bats we're having and fighting back every inning. Uh, we spotted up some early, but uh, I like the way we're coming back offensively with some fight. Drotar settling in, two back-to-back -back innings, three up, three down. What's firing for her? I think she's doing a great job job commanding the strike zone, really pounding the zone and mixing mixing her change up to keep the batters off balance. Awesome. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Love the wig. I'm always anticipating to see some antics behind Coach Smith now. A lot of personality from the Gamecocks. Throughout the country, there have been a lot of high-quality video bombs this week. Got, we got back from our third and final game of the day yesterday between South Carolina and USF. Looked on the Seattle Regional, and the Fordham dugout had some pretty good antics, too, out there at the University of Washington. Mike Cousins along with Aaron Miller, a two-time national champion at Oklahoma. This could be the final game of this regional. Florida State needs just one win to stay here at home next weekend and play host to Oklahoma State in the Super Regionals. South Carolina would need two victories to move on and eliminate Florida State. Sunday night baseball tonight. It's the Cubs and the Nationals in our nation's capital finishing up their three-game series at 7 Eastern. Former NC State Wolfpack baseball player Trey Turner activated off the DL back at short for the Nats. Coverage starts 6 Eastern with baseball tonight. Sunday night countdown on ESPN and the ESPN app. This is one of the most exciting weekends of the year. So much fun, smiles everywhere. You saw the antics in the South Carolina dugout. Just mentioned Trey Turner for Washington. When he got drafted out of college at NC State and made one of his first professional stops, it happened to be the team I was working for at the time, Padres affiliate. And at the batting cage, I introduced myself and said, hello, sir, I'm Trey Turner. And I knew right then and there we'd gotten off to a bad start. Because if anyone, if anyone calls me sir, they've made a huge <laughs> mistake and overestimated my importance in this world. However, Sunday Night Baseball, you should still watch tonight on ESPN. It hasn't hampered Trey Turner's career either.
Bozo at the plate for the third time. Skips away, it's two and two to the junior second baseman. Well, for Sander Cox, since coming in, two consecutive ground outs. One from the pinch hitter, Preble, to end the inning back in the third. Seems like what both teams needed was just a little bit of a shock, a little bit of a wake up. Kind of like what South Carolina did last night after getting back to the hotel, just jump in the pool. Cool off real quick, reset, get back to it. Bottom of the fourth, a two-run lead for Florida State. They won their sixth straight ACC championship this year to get the automatic bid from the league. South Carolina, five games under 500 in conference play in the SEC, an at-large selection, and the only team in this four-team group here in Tallahassee, which also included Bethune-Cookman from the MEAC and USF from the American. South Carolina, the only one not to be conference champs. Off the end of the bat and into the left center field gap. Bozal at second, a one-out double. It's been Jekyll and Hyde offense throughout this tournament for South Carolina. Low scoring against USF, a huge output game, and they're looking to repeat with that today. A huge wake up for the Gamecocks at the plate right over the head of Callie Harrod. And again, not able to keep the ball off the wall. Even with that shift. Jana Johns didn't reach against Megan King in her two and two thirds. But she's due. One for 11 in the regional. On the regular season, hit 357 with 15 home runs. And one swing of the back could tie this game. Hard shot foul. When you think about the importance of Megan King and what she brings to this team, referring to her as the go-to person on this squad, and you see her struggle in the first, you see her struggle in the second inning, and you think, that energy, you see her frustrated. That energy is bleeding in to the rest of your defense. And we've seen them just not as sharp as they normally are on defense, forgetting how many outs there are, not able to keep the ball off of the wall. Just a few blunders that FSU doesn't normally make during the season. And the crowd's now really getting agitated after not getting a strike call there. Benavides lets it go foul. But two pitches ago, this is where the crowd and Sander Cock thought it would be a strike. Well, it's been a tight zone all game. Borderline pitch in the river. It's got to be a tributary. It's a small zone. 2-2. Two, two. Foul right at the plate. Off the foot. I have been a victim of those types of foul balls, and they are not fun. Right off the ankle. What's it feel like? Like you're being electrocuted. Right on top of the foot hurts, it aches, doesn't go away. That's why you see her walking it off. When you think about this opportunity though, FSU not as sharp as they normally are. And you're seeing South Carolina absolutely take advantage of it. If they're gonna walk away from this regional and move on to supers, they have to win two games. So to strike while the iron is hot would be right now. Climbing the ladder, Sander Cox strikes out Johns. Oh, 
the first strikeout for Sander Cock, the third against South Carolina for the FSU staff. And the hero from last night's 10 inning game, the senior Kennedy Clark. South Carolina just caught Florida State starter Megan King in a very unusual, a vulnerable moment. With her last 41 and two thirds innings of postseason play, she'd allowed one earned run, and they tripled that today. That was dating back to last year's Super against LSU. Runner at second is Bozel with a one-out double. I think you could say Clark has had the best approach of any of the Gamecocks today with her two walks. Without a doubt. One of the most disciplined hitters that I have seen all weekend. Her timing is impeccable. She's able to identify off-speed pitches super early when they're out of the hand of the pitcher. Just even the facial expression, so locked in at the plate. Although Clark's got her undergraduate degree from South Carolina, she hopes to stay there, flying there for grad school, as she hopes to become a physician's assistant. Three plate appearances, three walks for Kennedy Clark. And here comes Drotar again with Clark on base in front of her. Still two outs on the board. And neither Sandercock or King have been really overtly reactionary. I would say they've kept their composure on the mound, but just a team that's used to such of a, a dominant performance in the circle when you see your staff struggling just to throw strikes they're getting a lot of base hits against your strong arms that's energy you feed off of you're seeing that it's not as easy as it normally is but it's the postseason that's what it's all about south carolina playing with their back against the wall and fsu just really on cruise control right now we look back through their schedule and the games they've played. When was the last time they faced a significant challenge, right? You had run rule wins against USF, Bethune Cookman in the regional, outscoring the opposition 20 to 1. They didn't yield a run in the ACC tournament. And their last regular season series against Syracuse, it was three run rule wins. Strotar down the line, base hit. Bozel. She's in to score standing up. It's a 1-1 ball game. After getting down 3-0 and 5-1, South Carolina makes it 5-4. Drotar inside outing this swing. Goes opposite field, drops it right behind Gordon at first base. And perfect placement, hitting behind your runners, challenging that throw to home, but Gordon having to cut it off. McGuire had the RBI single back in the first. Off the glove, in the circle, throw to first, gets away! Clark comes in to score, here comes Drotar ahead of the throw, she is out at home plate! No salvation on the slide, but certainly a protest from Beverly Smith. As Clark wheeled her way into home plate, and Drotar was tagged out behind her. A lot going on off the bat of Kinsey McGuire. Beverly Smith still arguing the call at home.
So after four, bounce against the wall. South Carolina has come back facing elimination to tie this game at five. It's anybody's guess over the next few frames. Some chaos to close out the fourth inning that ended in this game being tied. Here is Kayla Drotar trying to score the go-ahead run. She's called out at the plate. You'll get a look. It's a tough call. You can see why Beverly Smith is arguing the tag. Looks like it might have been behind the foot as it crosses home plate. And Drotar gets right back into the circle. It was five to one Florida State at the end of two. Two in the third, two in the fourth for South Carolina rallying back to tie this game here with the top of the fifth. The challenge now facing the offense with more home runs than any other team in the country. And the spark plug at the top, the senior shortstop, Callie Harris. She's walked twice. She and Kennedy Clark are having the battle of walks today. Clark, the senior left fielder for South Carolina, has walked three times. And Herod used her speed the first time she got on. Carson Gordon homered the next time she was aboard. Here in the fifth, she's retired for the first time. Since Grotar has come into the game, things have changed mightily for South Carolina. She's retired all seven batters she's faced, and they've evened the score. And Coach Beverly Smith said it best. She's commanding the zone. She's spotting the drop and her curve, and it's been that devastating changeup that she has thrown that has really kept Florida State off balance. Line to first, and quickly picked by Owens. Gordon goes down go back and finish that last inning as well as we saw Drotar get tagged out of the plate. It was a, a single for McGuire up the middle that got everything going. Their corner infield defense, whether it's been Owens at first base or Johns at third, has just been remarkable this weekend. And there's the off speed. Almost 20 miles an hour slower than her drop ball. So such a good pairing of timing there against FSU. It's just, it's a pitch that just hangs in the back of your mind. We've seen her throw it early in at-bats. We've seen her throw it late with two strikes. And you have to respect it. She's thrown it in the strike zone. See Coach Beverly Smith calling pitches. Steps back, she comes in. It's three perfect innings for Drotar. Welcome back to the NCAA Softball Regionals presented by Capital One. To keep up with everything going on over the course of this weekend, stay tuned to Bases Loaded on the ESPN app. It takes you to the best live action. Every game, every big moment on the road to the Women's College World Series only on the ESPN networks. Lots of love yesterday on Twitter from Matt Schick, Jen Schroeder holding it down on the Bases Loaded channel. Back in Softball Central at one point our boss Meg said 18 screens at once going watching all the softball across the country. One of the best weekends of the season as the postseason gets rolling. We're here in Tallahassee, Florida. The host Florida State Seminoles, number four overall seed into this tournament. Find themselves in an unusual situation. They've given up five today after near perfect pitching as of late. You just get a sense at how good they've been all year and things just not quite firing against South Carolina. 
Megan King struggling to find the strike zone at times. Sander Cock in the circle was struggling to find the strike zone and South Carolina barreling the ball up. They struggled early in this tournament to produce runs, but the past two, three games, they have really been clutch at the plate. Lauren Stewart, the redshirt junior center fielder in search of her first postseason hit this year, 0 for 9. Why this five runs really jumps out, having only allowed five runs or more seven times this year in 62 games. And you go back through the schedule for Florida State and look at the final scores. The last really close game was about three weeks ago. An ultimate weekend of the regular season as they took on Duke here at Joanne Graff Field. The middle game of that three game set which they swept was three to two. And they haven't lost a game in more than a month. April 17th. Here in a midweek game, a four nothing loss against Florida. Stewart's got good speed. But doesn't beat the throw from Sandercock, and she's out to start the fifth for South Carolina. And it hasn't really been a clean inning for Florida State yet in the field. High chopper to Sandercock, but she's able to make the play. You know, the staff is used to having one, two, three innings. Clean defense behind her. But it hasn't been the case today. Multiple free bases, a hit by pitch. Quite a few base hits. And that's exactly what Florida State needs right now. They need some momentum. They need a quick inning to swing all of that energy into their dugout. Two innings. FSU on defense has had to face 12 hitters for South Carolina. So they've had to labor to get out. They've had to labor in the field and in the circle. Well, there was the unusual nature of what happened at the beginning of April 2 for Florida State where they lost a regular season series against Louisville. They lost the opener, came back to win the middle game, and then 10-9, they were defeated on the road against Louisville. They had a streak of 52 straight ACC series victories going on seven years. And to have that streak come to an end that ran longer than anybody's tenure in a uniform lasts at Florida State, that was something unusual for this team to get through. So every team finds difficulty in its own way. For as good as Florida State has been, that streak coming to an end was a bit of a wake-up call, as Callie Herod told us earlier this week for this team. And then the next weekend, they lost two of three on the road against North Carolina. Lost to Florida on April 17th, but have not been defeated since. 15 straight. Saw Sandercock try and throw that off speed, but just held on too long. That's been a pitch she's worked on establishing all off season, and then now getting innings in postseason. It's a pitch she will need. The tougher offenses that she faces, she's got to change looks. Has to establish different timing. The seniors from first and short converged to bolster the confidence of the freshman, Sander Cox. Virginia Gatorade Player of the Year at Bishop O'Connell High School in Arlington, Virginia. 
2-2 again. Stroke to left, down for extra bases. There goes Owens with her second hit of the day, and she's at second with just one down. This gap has just been burned all game. They have been challenging the freshman Herzog in left field. And you just don't see her turn it on the fifth gear, put the burners on, cut that ball to keep it off the wall. Because the further it rolls, for every step you take in the outfield, the runner's taking at least three. And now a runner in scoring position, only one out for South Carolina. And even you think Herzog being in left field, you know, we've seen her kind of all over the field in the circle. We've seen her come up clutch at the plate, but she's been tested out there. It hasn't just been one time. It's been two, now three times to that gap. They tested her arm. They have challenged her in the outfield. And let me tell you, in postseason, Outfield play can make or break games. You are the last line of defense. If you can keep a base runner off of second base to cut a ball off the wall, it is crucial. It's the difference between a win and a loss. And there's Herzog again. No test of the arm this time, but it's runners at the corners for South Carolina, threatening to take their first lead of the day. They were down five to one. They've scored four unanswered. And have another chance as they knock at the door here in the last of the fifth. And we will see Kumiana. She has been in the starting lineup this entire tournament. We saw her hit a very clutch home run. Almost 40% of her hits this season have been out of the park. So when you talk about an opportunity to bring this swinger into the game, this is this is the opportunity to do it. Ten home runs on the season. Out toward right field, Mason is in to make the catch. The throw to the plate gets away. Owen scores to go ahead. Fabian with a big turn at second. She stops there. The Gamecocks have the lead over the defending national champions. A disappointed shell nut because this throw from Mason couldn't have been any more clutch. A strike to the chest of Anna Shelnut, the catcher, to make that tag, but with a full speed runner coming at you at home plate. Hard to uh, have that eye and hand eye coordination to make that catch and tag. But now South Carolina takes the lead. Such a strong arm. A clear out, not even a slide, because they knew, South Carolina knew that that was gonna be an out. Not even a close play, but Shell not, not able to hold on to that ball to make the out. You see the defensive shift. Danny Morgan in center playing between Allie Harrod and second base. They're anticipating her to go opposite field. So as a hitter, you've got to know what type of pitches you're going to see. Likely something on the outer corner, corner, a screwball away. Down the line, long way to go, and Herzog has the ball elude her in foul territory. Sander Kock gets in front of Bozel, 0-2, batting for the second time in as many innings. South Carolina has taken the lead. You're in the bottom of the fifth inning, needing a win to force a game seven against Florida State.
South Carolina 27 and one when they score over six runs. Over to third, Benavides keeps it in front, has no play. So back to back plays where there is a chance to make the third out of the inning. Florida State can't get it done. South Carolina keeps it going. Benavidez just trying to do her best to keep this ball in front of her. It was a hard hit. Off of the bat of Simpson. They are going to score that a hit. So now runners on the corners. South Carolina has been so good with two outs all weekend long. Fabian at third, Bozel at first for Jenna Johns. Hard grounder, diving stop, Herod just a couple of feet away. Cheryl was waiting, that saved a run and brings the fifth to a close. But the Gamecocks have scored in three straight innings to leapfrog the Seminoles. It's on to the sixth in Tallahassee. Right now, it's looking like we may have a game seven here as well with the winner of this regional going on to take on Oklahoma State. It'll start Thursday. The number 13 seed taking down Tulsa, which worked its way back from the loser's bracket. And if Florida State comes back to win it, that super will be here. Six five South Carolina. They've jumped in front. They were down three nothing after a half inning, five to one after two, and over the last three innings they've scored five runs. They went to work. Alyssa Kumiyama came in as a pinch hitter, line drive to right field, brought home a run on a sacrifice fly, and a surprising performance today from Florida State starting pitcher Megan King, two and two thirds. She started this game, allowed three runs, tied a career high with four walks. It's been a small strike zone today, but the adjustment has to be made on both sides, and South Carolina has done a great job taking advantage of every opportunity. They're up a run. You definitely got to give credit where credit is due. South Carolina showed up to play. They have been lights out in the circle since KK Drokar. Rotar, excuse me, came into this game. She has been so sharp facing FSU and on the base paths. They have challenged the defense of Florida State. And a challenge to South Carolina's defense. Mason going for two ahead of Stewart's throw. Lead off double for the sophomore. Mason starting things off strong, an opposite field shot. Line drive through the infield. You gotta imagine she's fired up. Sliding in safely, she was the right fielder to make that throw home just last inning where the out wasn't able to be made. So she had the extra incentive to get things started here in the top of the sixth. And the chance she had on that throw home that's the backyard fantasy type of play you envision as a kid growing up. Oh yeah, on both sides, as a catcher and as an outfitter, you live for those plays to throw out that go-ahead run at home. But again, you have to give credit to South Carolina for adding that pressure. Going ahead and sending that runner, challenging Florida State, knowing that they're not their sharpest today. They have played lights out. Through five innings so far, they have been fearless. Trotar came in in the third after two innings. 
from Dixie Raley retired all nine batters in the third, fourth, and fifth. One, two, three frames. So that's the first base runner she's allowed. They did call an illegal pitch. So Coach Smith with a conversation with home plate umpire Anthony Small. First call of that variety we've seen here in our sixth game in the regional. Two and one on Danny Morgan. She's already driven in a run. And the extra base hit parade continues for FSU with that double to lead it off for Mason. 17 of their 24 hits over their two plus games this weekend have gone for extra bases. Two on, nobody out. So with the illegal pitch call, Drotar struggled to come back. So now two on and no outs. And Shellnet now with the opportunity to help herself out. And we've got the opportunity to go back to the studio and check in with Molly McGrath. Hey, Molly. They've been absolutely sizzling in the postseason. Open SEC tournament. They scored eight runs, a run roll win against Old Miss. Seven against Toledo, eight the first time against Virginia Tech. Wildcats looking good. And here in Tallahassee, top six, Florida State. Once led by four, they've got two on and nobody out. It has not been their best day. But even an average day for them is really good. Bozo called off by Simpson coming in from right field. There's the first out of the inning. Can't rest easy against this lineup, though, because you retire the six hitter and it brings up the seven hitter who's hit 10 home runs this year, Cassidy Davis. And she just broke into that category this weekend. She came in to this regional with nine, but now broke into that 10 club. Seven of the nine in this lineup, almost all hitters, one through nine with over 10 home runs. And this was the home run, the 10th of her season against Bethune Cookman. Left the yard in a hurry. The number of home runs has continued to rise in college softball. You just look at the last two years and this year. Yesterday there were 61 home runs across the tournament. More than 1,000 total home runs this season than there were just two years ago, in excess of 10,000. Now toward right, Simpson comes over. She's got two in a row. Throws to third, safe. Mason ahead of the throw. Tying run at third on the back side of the play. Great base running from Morgan. So an aggressive tag by Mason and a close play at third. Jana Johns not happy about this call, but it looks there to be the correct one. Great timing, getting off of second base. That right there, a better angle. A bang play. Mason at third, Morgan at second, two down, McKenzie Herzog. It's not been the easiest, easiest of days for the freshman in left field. A chance to give the Seminoles the lead in the top of the sixth. She has proven clutch before has already cashed in a grand slam this regional. Back up 
the middle and down for a base hit. Mason scores to tie. Morgan scores to put FSU in front. Herzog is caught in a rundown between first and second. She was turning the corner to see if she could get the extra bag. She doesn't, but her impact is huge. A two-run single takes us to the bottom of the sixth with the Seminoles just a few innings away from moving on to Supers. And the freshman does it again. A two-RBI single, and FSU takes the lead, 7-6. The NCAA Softball Regionals is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Florida State owns the trophy, but their mantra this year has been defend nothing, attack everything. Their offense surging back to life, back to back, big days offensively for the freshman McKenzie Herzog. A grand slam yesterday for her third home run of the year. And last inning, a two out, two run single back up the middle to turn a 6-5 deficit into a 7-6 lead. And Megan King, who started this game two and two thirds, allowed three runs, one of the best pitchers in the country, re-enters to defend the lead here in the bottom of the sixth. You can hear the crowd get behind her as she took the field. The senior gets the opportunity to come back into this game, slam the door shut. And the outfield tilted around toward the left, Perfectly played to retire Kennedy Clark for the first time today. Drotar, two for three. Two singles. South Carolina has done such a great job of answering all game. Four out of the six innings so far, they've been able to tack at least one on the board. And you can just sense that attack mindset Early in the game, even when King was struggling to throw strikes, they were still taking big swings. I had mentioned, hey, take till you get a strike, make her challenge the zone, but they were taking big cuts, and KK Drotar gets her third base hit of the game. And it's her first one that doesn't drive in a run. They've been applying pressure on all sides of this game. They have been sharp in the circle since Drotar came in for Dixie Rayleigh. They have applied a lot of pressure at the plate, but to me the most impressive part has been on the base paths. They have not been afraid to run. Mason's got it as McGuire is retired on one pitch. So King had some time to go over, throw some warm-up pitches, watch the game, get a feel for it. Certainly helps to come back in here with the lead. First two games, she threw just two innings, but the staff collectively was incredible. Allowed one run, three hits, didn't walk anybody. Today, 10 hits, they've walked five. Carly Heath gets deployed as a pinch hitter for Lauren Stewart. Here with two out in the last of the sixth. King looks markedly different now that she's re-entered. A big adjustment. Having that time to get in the dugout and just 
break down what had happened the first two innings she was in this game. And you can see the difference going straight out hitters. Starting out strong, attacking that strike zone and getting ahead. Heath has been called on as a pinch hitter several times throughout the course of this weekend. South Carolina's Gatorade Player of the Year last year out of North Augusta, South Carolina. Down 1-2 with two out. seen the freshman for FSU step up big time in this tournament and now an opportunity for the freshman Heath at the plate. That gets past Shelnut, Drotar down to second base. A succession of power pitches from King slowed it down. Holder catcher, two and two. The strikeout she was looking for ends the sixth. So King settles in, comes back in to slam the door for the strikeout against freshman Carly Heath. NCAA Softball Regionals brought to you by Capital One. We go to the seventh in a one-run game. Certainly plenty of fans on hand here in Tallahassee and wherever the golf teams roam for Florida State, this time Fayetteville, Arkansas, checking out the action with Florida State needing just one softball victory to move on to Supers. And on the other side, of course, celebrity viewer, tweeter, Don Staley, South Carolina's women's basketball coach, tweeting along with the game in support of the Gamecocks as well. Savannah Parker comes in, the freshman pinch hitter here for Rock Benavides in the number nine spot. Florida State up a run, looking to add to their total, give themselves some insurance. Looking toward the bottom of the seventh. Can't overstate just how important KK Drotar has been today for the Gamecocks. This game looked like it may have been going in a dangerous direction early on. Five runs scored in the first two innings by FSU. They'd run ruled their first two opponents, 10 total innings. She came in, gave them three straight one, two, three innings that allowed them to come back in this game. Shot to third, John's off her feet and has the ball in her glove, one out. A great play by Johns, able to react to that line drive right over her head. Kelly Herod and the Seminoles had not trailed in a game prior to today since April 28th. Taken on Duke here in Tallahassee. 
Duke, of course, the road team, comes to the plate first, scores one. And that was all the Blue Devils would score that day. Florida State went on to win eight to one. They've rattled off 15 consecutive wins coming into this game. So the adversity on the scoreboard, seeing their best pitcher have a difficult moment. Megan King, her first two and two thirds, bumpier than usual. But they've come back five over the first two innings in a two spot in the top of the sixth. Herod goes after the 1-1. Stewart, the center fielder to the gap, gets called off by Simpson, who stabs at it and gets the second out. Let's go to the studio, Molly. Had a combined no-hitter earlier as well during the Gainesville Regional, and that was the last team to defeat Florida State more than a month ago, 4 nothing here in Tallahassee back on the 17th of April. Two up and two down for Drotar here in the top of the seventh, the senior Carson Gordon, her 15th home run of the season earlier in the game. Inning over. Seven to six, going to the bottom of the seventh. South Carolina's season hangs in the balance. Three outs to work with. Our Capital One rewarding performance comes with the last batter of the sixth for Florida State, McKenzie Herzog. She's been clutch all weekend. A grand slam earlier this tournament for the go-ahead. And here the two RBI single to allow them to take the lead now seven to six here in the bottom of the seventh inning. One last chance for South Carolina as they battle for their season to continue. King came back into the circle last inning in the sixth, faced just four batters. And it's the bottom third of the lineup here for South Carolina. The freshman Madison Owens, the first into the box. A Florida State win eliminates South Carolina and keeps the Seminoles at home next weekend for a Super Regional against Oklahoma State. A win for South Carolina. These teams go right back at it. Seven more innings, 30 minutes after the end of game one. King recollects, and she's two outs away. Back to the studio, Molly McGrath, what's the latest? <laughs> 41 straight wins for Oklahoma, six shy of Arizona's Division I winning streak record, 47 between 96 and 97. What's it going to take to stop your alma mater? At this point, I'm not sure because they are firing on all cylinders. One of the toughest pitching staffs in offenses in the nation. Strike one to Jordan Fabian.
So far, a lot of aggressive swings from South Carolina, and that has been the story for them this entire game, is pedal to the metal. At the plate, on the base paths, on defense, in the circle. They have fought with everything in the tank. Swing and a miss, strike three. South Carolina is down to its final out. Sports Center tonight after Sunday Night Baseball with Bucci and Levy. Highlights from the matinee in the Bronx. The Yankees look to retake first from the Rays. We'll look at how the Raptors can bounce back against the Bucks and Tom Rinaldi one-on-one -on -one with the PGA Championship winner. Sports Center after Cubs Nats on ESPN and the ESPN app. Haley Simpson, the last hope for the Gamecocks. On the ground, Cheryl to first, not in time. They had it shifted perfectly, and Simpson beats it out. Simpson is on fire, as she should be. She passes the bat along to the top of the lineup. Freshman in the nine spot, gets it done. Right to the five, six hole. Cheryl has to come across her body to make this play. And a good call. Save it first. So the tying run for South Carolina is at first base. Mackenzie Bozel at the plate down 0-1 represents the winning run. Bozel with the most walks on this team, 32. Ninety-five pitches. FSU. One strike away for Florida State. They jumped out to the early lead, 5-1 after two innings. South Carolina got in front, 6-5. McKenzie Herzog changed that, 7-6 and King can put it away. For 2-2, will happen at least once more. Bozel battles. Season on the line. Kennedy Clark, two spots away. One of two seniors for South Carolina wants one more chance to step in the batter's box. Not just yet. Foul tip. Can you imagine the emotion both seniors looking upon? Full count. In danger of putting the winning run on base. And King does. So first and second for South Carolina with Johns coming up. Still looking for that big swing. That's the fifth walk for King today in the circle. Megan King has never walked as many opponents in a game as she has today. The red shirt senior has the tying and go ahead winning run on base here. And Johns takes ball one. 
And when you think about the threat of the senior on deck, Kennedy Clark, if Jana Johns can find her way on base, if she can't get the tying run across herself, it's the threat of the senior left-handed swinger on deck who had the go-ahead home run back in the 10th inning last night to get the win over USF. So you can imagine how bad that senior wants her at bat. Could potentially be the last of her career or if she can cash in two runs, could take her into game two against the Seminoles. And out ends the game and South Carolina's season. South Carolina has been so good with two outs. Can they capitalize the tying run in scoring position? Strike two. Play. for the Gamecocks with Kennedy Clark and Dixie Raley. The reigning champs will welcome Oklahoma State to Tallahassee next weekend for a best two of three series in a super regional round. They win it 7-6 in comeback fashion. Up next, Oklahoma, Wisconsin, on behalf of our entire crew, the former Sooner Aaron Miller, I'm Mike Cousins saying so long.